Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca and this is the absolutely stunning CCM Trigger 8 Pro Hockey Stick Review. So this is a long time coming. I understand this video is really late, especially compared to the other reviews that are out there, but I really wanted to use this a lot. I've seen a lot of things about CCM's durability being shoddy and terrible and I wanted to test it for myself since I didn't have the ability to review this stick really quickly which I'll get to in one second I wanted to just use it for a while and see how the stick has been lasting and performing and it is my most used stick right now out of all of my sticks I've been testing out and taking a look at and it is also one of my favorites but we're going to compare it against one of my all-time favorites to be honest the trigger 7 pro and probably my ultimate favorite stick there is and it has a lot to live up to from that and we'll see if it does live up to it and if it is a worthy successor to it so first of all i want to say a huge thanks to ccm for sending me this stick to do the review on and to make content on it took a while so i apologize for that but I will have a slight reasoning for this coming out. Now, CCM sent me this stick, but they didn't send me actually this stick. So when I got this stick, it was 80 flex and it was my specs, but 80 flex, so right hand, 80 P29. So I cut it down to my normal height that I use, which is about a 59, because that's what some companies still or made their sticks at that point. So I want everything to be the same for reviews. Cut it down, it said, you know, I'm gonna try this, see how it is, if it's close enough to other 85s, because there are variances on retail sticks. So if you have an 85 plus 10 or minus 10 flex, it's not always perfect. So I figured I'd try it out, see if it feels like an 85 flex. And if it does feel like an 85, I can review it and it will be totally fine and I'll talk about it. Fortunately, I took it out on the ice and I was using it and it felt like a total noodle. Whether it's an 80 or a 75, it just felt totally different and I couldn't do anything with it. Every shot I took was considerably less powerful than I was expecting. I just couldn't get the force behind it. It would just whip out on me too fast. Every pass I would make, which is a huge part of my game, I'm a huge, huge, huge puck moving defenseman and that's all I do is give other people who are better at scoring the puck. So every pass I was making, especially long pass, it just became absolute rockets of shots that I couldn't control and the people trying to get it were ducking and not controlling as well. So I grabbed that stick and I just knew right away I can't review an 80 flex, it's not gonna work for me. So I ended up buying this stick and I ended up selling that 80 flex to a teammate of mine who is still using that 80 flex. So that is a good sign as well. But because I couldn't use that 80 flex, I had to wait for this one to come in stock. And by the time I got this stick in my house, it was already like a month after I actually arrived. So all the reviews were already out there, like the really quick ones that are all obviously there, boom, reviews, all that stuff. And so I figured I would use this for a longer time. I really wanted to check out this dual feel blade and they're new, I can't remember exactly what it is. I'll throw it up here. Tech on here, which makes the blades feel more dampened and softer feeling to you. I'm a huge fan of that. I did a whole video that you can watch up there about stick blades and what is inside stick blades for dampening and puck feel. I love puck feel and I always talk about it over and over again. I find a lot of people don't, but it's really important to me, especially someone who makes a lot of passes. I love different feeling blades and I like more dampened blades. So CCM going that route in all their blades gets me really excited, so I want to test it out, see if there's durability concerns on it, see how long it's lasted, and see if there's durability issues on the stick, because I see online a lot of people kind of harping on them. First of all, just really quickly on this, just because it doesn't really matter, the graphics on this stick, I think look absolutely fantastic. There is more purple than what is on the Trigger 7, and I really, really like that purple look, but you kind of lose some of it on the bottom, which I think is a shame, because that looks really good. Obviously, graphics do not matter whatsoever, so we're gonna skip over the rest of that, because it doesn't really make any difference, and it's just kind of the look of it. I've had people People ask me over and over again of what socks I always recommend and I've been using Cut Shield for a while now. I have multiple stuff for them. So Cut Shield is a company out of Canada that makes cut resistant socks and these are their Pro Air 6 which means it's an anti level 6 for cut resistance on here. Full review of it up there so you can check it out. But I now have a coupon code with Cut Shield so if you want to support the channel you can check out the link in the description to Cut Shield. Buy some socks which I think are honestly one of the better socks on the market. I absolutely love them. They're pretty thin and they are cut resistant and they're not too hot either. Use my coupon code you get 25% off and it helps support the channel. So weight on this stick is something that I found pretty interesting and for me is kind of annoying. These weights on these sticks are so close to each other within like a few maybe 10 15 grams. I can't remember off the top of my head and I'll post a picture if I can find it on here that shows what one this is. With that said, the weight on this stick feels lighter than the Trigger 7 Pro does because the weight is kind of pulled away from here. So I don't know if this is their new tech or whatever they're using that makes the blade that much lighter, but the weight on this stick is now kind of up here more. So more of the weight is on the shaft than it is on the blade. Blade weight at the bottom, you can feel it a lot because it's further away from your hands. Feels much lighter to me than the Trigger 7 Pro, but to me, the balance is totally thrown off and it's one of the parts I don't like about this stick. One of the parts that annoys me, it's the same as the Trigger 5 Pro. When that stick came out, that thing was so light and so blade light 
that I just hated it. It was the only trigger stick I really didn't like. Went to the six and it was one of my favorites. So that five was really kind of the wrong weight balance on it and they fixed it. I think this one's kind of going a little bit in the wrong direction, but it's not as bad as what that five was. So this one for me was still usable and it was still fine. I just noticed too many times trying to reach for pucks from people, trying to one hand things for people and trying to stick battle people with one hand or really reaching out. The weight on this just wasn't low enough on the shaft and blade for me. Again, this is a personal preferencing, but I noticed that weight wasn't there for me and I had issues with it and I went back and forth with a seven and the eight and I just realized how much more I love the seven because of how it feels slightly heavier down there and just the balance was better for me. So I was a huge, huge fan of that seven. Shaft shape on this stick, normally I cut off the tops like this and this is actually from the trigger seven and that way you can kind of get a look of how big the outer walls are as well as the overall shaft shape but triggers are weird because they have a very different taper on the stick so the back side is kind of rounded the inner is more concave so your fingers fit in there which you can kind of see on this hopefully a little bit but you kind of notice it more down here I find than at the top because it feels more traditional at the top and kind of bows out this way but it's the same thing it has that asymmetrical taper where the inside edge you can see that taper kind of goes concave very extreme down here less so up here but on the outside edge it's convex all the way across here so it kind of bulges outwards across here it is the same that was on the seven and honestly besides the weight on this if i put these two side by side i honestly couldn't tell you a difference they feel exactly the same when using them so everything there kind of stayed the same and there's nothing changing all that much which i don't think is a bad thing because the trigger line is very very popular and it's still that asymmetrical shape which i think feels great kind of less extreme with bower zoom with the nexus line this one feels really good in your hands and is really solid and i'm a big fan of it now for the grip test ccm has in the past been awful for grip and they have gotten a lot better. You can definitely see how they've added texture back into their sticks right here, and I'm a huge fan of that. And it kind of follows this interesting pattern which looks like a topographical map of something, but I don't actually think it is. And it's kind of all through it, and you can kind of see it right there. But really, the textured part of this stick is not the whole thing. So you can kind of see it going right here, and it's right there, but then it stops up here, and it's not textured up here. So right where your bottom hand is, is basically where the texture is. So for the grip test, we are going to use my Pro Sock Bauer Single Nash Palm Glove, so you can really feel it through. I talked in the past how bad CCM grips were. They've gotten so much better. The FT6 Pro was so good for the grip, and this one is okay. It's good, it's just not amazing. For grippiness, it is pretty grippy. It's good enough, it's totally fine. That texture feeling though, definitely doesn't come through all that much. So you can see it kind of on the back side here, you can see that texture with hopefully in the light. And when it's running on your palm, you can feel it, but not a ton. I really do wish that was more textured. And when I'm running this way, you barely feel it right here as well. It's very minimal. I like the idea of doing something different for the textured grip, just not doing like a basketball grip pattern. But for me, these just aren't textured enough for me to really love it to make it like one of my favorite sticks. I love the feeling of that Jet Speed FT6 Pro, which definitely feels more te textured and it's more of a traditional design on this. So I kind of wish this was more of a textured piece. Even if this did have the same design and it was just more textured, so it was like more pronounced kind of ridges, I would like that more because to me it just doesn't feel quite as good as it could and a little disappointing on there, but the grip overall is fine and good enough. So since we are talking about the grip, which also kind of leads to the paint and the durability, this stick still has CCMs kind of famous now chipping all over the place. So you can see it right here, that whole outer, I don't know if it's a carbon layer or if it's just the gloss layer and the wrap that chips on this, but you can see it chipping right through there as is CCM tradition by now. And it is a like nice beefy chip right there. And it's going to be all throughout the stick. You can see it in the purple right there and you can just like see it all throughout the stick up here and everything else it that is standard ccm it's kind of going to happen it's kind of all over the place it doesn't mean the stick's falling apart it's just that is what ccm does and i don't know how they can get around that but ccm is one of the worst for it in this and it's just it's continuing down this and it, the stick itself is totally fine and i've had zero issues with this stick and it still plays the exact same way it did when I first got it, which was like a month after these things came out. So I'm pretty satisfied with the durability on this. Now I want to say this as well. Not only has this stick lasted me since then, and I play defense, I block shots, but I'm generally pretty nice with my sticks. My 80 flex that I sold to the guy I play hockey with also plays three times a week and he still has it and he is a lot less nice then I am on stick. He might use his stick quite a bit as kind of a slashing tool or he just is really aggressive on face-offs and he's a lot more aggressive than I am on my gear. And his is still holding up totally fine, which 
is pretty impressive and there has been a lot to say out there about poor durability in CCM world and honestly from what I have seen and I've talked to multiple retailers with it and talked about where's your issue with CCM sticks it's not the trigger the issue that people seem to be having is down here on the jet speed not the trigger so I saw a lot of stuff online about how the new blade tech is terrible zero issues with me zero issues with the person also using this and I've again talked to multiple stores zero issues with the blades the fact that this one's lasting for me and doing totally fine says a decent amount for me but also the fact that the other one that TCM actually sent me that is still being used by someone is still totally fine says a lot more and it still shoots like it did and plays like it did from day one now on to the part that I find the most interesting passing and puck feel so like I mentioned I had that video where I break apart sticks, talk about what's inside them and how it matters for puck feel. That whole thing was all about pinginess. And what I call pinginess is kind of the feel of the puck transferring through your hand. So kind of the ping that the puck makes when you make a hard shot or receive a hard pass. And honestly, I love what CCM has done with this stick and the stick blade for puck feel. They have made it more damp. Now, the trigger was always CCM's more dampened blade. They had their kind of dual thing in here where it had a softer blade here, more pingy and stiffer on the toe. So shots off the toe were harder, but you could have more puck feel down here. They still have that with their dual feel, but the whole thing has been softened up or at least made more dampened feeling for puck feel. A lot of the pro specs is a lot more dampened than what you see at retail. This thing feels fantastic. I love making passes with this. I love stick handling with it. I know where the puck is. I feel this nice little dampenness to it and it really feels solid and very nice to the touch. Obviously this is personal preference. You see people online all the time saying, oh, the, this stick has the best puck feel and it's extremely pingy. That stick is more dampened and I love it. This stick, which was one of my, actually is my favorite probably overall stick, the Trigger 7 Pro, is less dampened. And I like the Trigger 8 Pro a lot more for actual puck. So that is huge and I absolutely love it. And I love this direction CCM is going. Supposedly it's gonna be the next jet speed. So I'm gonna try try that one out to see how that plays, to see if I really like that one as well. I think it was in the last tax. I didn't get a tax. And I didn't think it was worth buying one because I had so many other sticks to review. I'm happy more companies are going to more dampened feel. I talk about that a lot in stick reviews and did a whole video on it so it means a lot to me and people are kind of ignoring it a bit so seeing ccm kind of acknowledge that pro idea and feel and that was like in that whole ghost stick too they had that because it was more of a pro spec stick i love seeing that and i absolutely love it on here and it feels fantastic so i have also talked about this in the past for passing where i find bower sticks to be honestly the king of passing which is somehow how they make the blades and the heels skinnier so the difference on these though is kind of interesting because I do notice that the heel is skinnier on, well at least it feels like it, on the Trigger 8 than it is on the 7. So this has a little bit of tape, but you could still, at least to me, see that this feels a little bit more squared off than this was rounded down here. And this maybe is that new blade core design, but the heel itself just looks a little bit thinner at the tips here. Might be the exact same, might be tricks playing on me. With that said, for actual saucing and everything with the stick, I didn't notice the difference between the seven and eight. It was that balance that was a big part and the dampening feel and it was fantastic, but actual making sauce passes for the two, I didn't notice a huge difference between them. They felt pretty much the same. And you want to support the channel and you need a base layer and a protective kind of supportive base layer that helps protect your growing as well as your hips. Check out the Cortec. This is the Pro 1.0 pants. So this one is not quite as restrictive. And this is kind of tight right here in this X pattern. You might've seen these as Under Armour before or Bauer for the hockey specific ones. There's also the Core 3.0, which is a lot stiffer as you can see. Really helps protect my growing and keeping it kind of in place and make sure it doesn't overstretch itself. There's a discount code and you click the link in the description Use that discount code to get a discount off, help support myself, as well as get you some pretty awesome base layer pants that really do help with injury prevention and help stabilize your core while playing. I also have to say, between these two, it was kind of interesting. Trigger 7 Pro has been my favorite stick in the past for overall shot. I felt I was more controlled with the jet speed, but the Trigger 7, I always felt I shot best with. The Trigger 8 Pro is kind of one tiny step above it. It just feels like I get quicker releases. The shot feels like it comes off harder, but I also feel like I'm less consistent with the 8 than the 7. Now, part of that I also believe is to do with the balance because I have a harder time with my blade positioning on the 8 than on the 7. So if I get the hold of both of them, the 8 definitely feels like it comes off better, just a slight, slight level. But my consistency on the 7 Pro because of that balance and just the overall weight on it, 
just made my shots more consistent and more controllable. For shooting, prefer the seven, but even though the eight's peaks are higher and better, but if you can get away with this weight and the balance and don't mind it, you're gonna be totally fine with it. It's gonna shoot better than a seven. It's gonna be probably one of the best low kicking sticks on the market. It's way better than any stick basically, but one out there, which we'll talk about in a sec, kind of next level and is really, 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 really good for that. And I'm a huge, huge fan of it. But again, balance on this was just my preference. Now I mentioned that this is the best shooting stick, I should say low kick stick on the market. And I do want to put a little caveat. There is a stick that I have shot better with than that one, which was this, the True Project X. Now I grabbed one of these and I'm going to do a full review on it, but I wanted to call something out on this. This stick shot better than the Trigger 8 Pro did for the first game, maybe two. I'm going to say game. And then after that, it feels like it's now like a 75 flex stick. So when I shot this, you can see the kind of points right here and it looks like fatigue marks on someone's probably gonna correct me for carbon or epoxy because you can actually feel this bump on it now these started showing up after me using it so when i first had this stick and shot with it and passed with it felt like an 85 felt great shots were unreal the next time they were a little bit less now i've probably used this stick only six times and this is getting worse every time like i keep finding more and more pieces of like this basically on it. And it now feels like it's like a 75 ish flex stick. So it's a lot less controllable. It's a lot less like the pop on it is kind of gone already. Cause it's a lot more because I can't load it as much because it is a lot more whippy. So this stick did shoot better than the trigger eight pro did, but for literally escape and that was it. And then I would go back to the trigger and I was just like, okay, the trigger just lasts longer and is better. So why not go back to that? So that's about it for this stick. And it kind of leads me into the whole recommendation part on here and what I can kind of say to this. So let me put it this way. This blade makes me extremely happy i absolutely love it but if i could get this blade onto this balance point so if i could get more weight down here i think they took some away with this new blade design if they could get more of it down here to get the exact same balance that is on the 7 pro but this blade feel and this shot it'd be my perfect stick and i would absolutely love it but if i had to choose between an 8 pro and a 7 pro tomorrow or if i got one for free and could pick a stick I'm gonna go with the 7 Pro just because that balance point for me just works a lot better than the 8 does and I struggle with the 8 and I tried to use the 8 straight for weeks to get used to it and I just like, I was like, okay, cool, I'm getting used to it, it's great. Then I would still notice, okay, I might have missed that. I'd go to the 7 just to try it back and the 7 I instantly didn't notice me missing things anymore. Notice how much more controlled I was with like playing the puck and poking pucks away from people and it was just like, oh, okay, this is what I love for balance. The stick is fantastic. It shoots really well. The durability has been pretty good but for me, the seven is still kind of the king and it was really, really good. And this leads me more down the line of again with CCM where every year releases are just too much because honestly, the six and seven, the seven was a decent jump in terms of shot. And I think it was pretty lighter too by a decent amount where you noticed it. The thing here with the eight and seven, there still is tech things in here. For example, that new blade, which is more dampened and everything, which is nice, but it would have been nice to see that in a line coming this year. So if it was in the nine, and obviously I'm coming from this as someone that reviews sticks and realizing people have to buy sticks all the time. I would just love to see that all these changes have gone into the next one and kind of worked on that balance. Maybe that is their goal to make the balance the way it is, but they did that for the five and then they kind of went back to the way I like it for the six and seven. Preference, obviously I prefer that balance point and I think I really hope they go back to that and I hope the nine kind of adds all these features they had, but then going back to the balance point at the seven, that would make me extremely happy and I look forward to hopefully using it this year and testing it out. I have had every trigger stick since the two, so I will definitely buy one and use it because it's my favorite family of sticks. So that is it for the review of the CCM Trigger 8 Pro. Huge thanks to CCM for sending me this stick to review. Sorry it took so long, but at the same time, I had to replace the stick and I want to make sure it durably works because by the time that was out, all the sticks were out. So hopefully this will be kind of helping people down the line now and when this stick is out and on shelves still and people can grab it because I think it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. If this video was helpful to you and helps you make a purchase, please let CCM know on social media like on Instagram, let them know hockey reviews, videos are extremely helpful and you wanna see it continue. Helps me get on hopefully their radar and they realize that them sending me the sticks is actually helpful for them as well. 
so that way I can make more content and do more reviews. So again, thank you very much for watching this video. Remember to like this video, subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram and TikTok, links are in the description. If you want to support the channel so I can make more content and do more reviews and you're buying hockey equipment anyways, check out the links in the description. If you're in Canada to hockey supremacy for the US to pure hockey, clicking those links, make a purchase, gives me a kickback so I can make more content and do more videos. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel without buying any equipment, you can check out the link in the description to buy me a coffee. Everything through any of these links always comes right back into the channel so I can keep making more content and doing more reviews. Thank you very much for watching and take it easy. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca.